People around the world are becoming more aware of new therapies that are being developed. These therapies, such as drugs and vaccines, are developed through clinical trials. All clinical trials begin with a question that scientists, including doctors and disease experts, want to answer. To do this, scientists prepare a development plan based on early studies done in the lab. Next, researchers submit a request to regulatory and government agencies, like the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and the European Medicines Agency, to begin testing a new therapy in people. Once this request is approved, researchers seek volunteers to participate in clinical trials. The success of these trials depends on including a diverse group of people representative of those who may be treated by the new therapy if it is approved for use. There are four phases of clinical trials. During phase one, a new therapy is given to a small group of participants. The goals are to check the safety, find a safe dose, and track any medical problems. During phase two, researchers check the therapy's safety and how it works in participants with a specific disease or condition. During phase three, researchers check the therapy's safety and how well it works in a larger group of people with the specific medical condition. Phase four trials happen after a therapy has been approved and made available to the public. Researchers look at how the therapy works in the real world and its long-term effects. This whole process could take over eight years and vaccine development typically takes even longer because there are more safety tests. This development process is important because it's the best way to ensure that the safest, most effective therapies reach the public. Hi, my name is Dr. Jonathan Jackson. I'm the founder and executive director of the Community Access Recruitment and Engagement, or CARE, Research Center at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard Medical School. I've designed and run clinical trials, but more importantly, I've also participated as a study volunteer in dozens and dozens of research studies. So I've been on both sides of the clinical research process. Clinical research awareness is important, and it's important to me because I believe that the only way new cures and treatments work for everyone is if everyone gets involved in the process. So throughout this video, my goal is to tell you more about clinical trials and help answer questions you may have about participation. Why do people participate in clinical trials? Study volunteers have different reasons for joining clinical trials. Many people participate because they want to help advance science and help others. Some people participate because clinical trials are their best treatment option or because they want to learn more about their own health. Along with complementary medical care, sometimes study volunteers receive compensation for their time and participation. These are also good reasons for why people volunteer. What is the informed consent process? Before participating in a clinical trial, study volunteers review an informed consent form with the study doctor or nurse. This helps study volunteers understand what is expected of them during the trial and lets them know about the possible risks and benefits. While all study volunteers are required to sign the informed consent form, it is important to know that this form is not a contract. Study volunteers have the right to stop participation at any time during the clinical trial. They also have the right to ask questions at any time during the trial. What does participation in a clinical trial look like? The first part of the clinical trial is called the screening period. Each trial has guidelines called eligibility criteria that say what type of person the study can include. For example, healthy volunteers or patients with a certain condition. During this period, the study staff will find out whether a study volunteer meets these eligibility criteria. Next is the treatment period, in which the study volunteers may receive a therapy. In a clinical trial for a vaccine against an infectious disease, healthy volunteers may receive the vaccine. No matter what kind of therapy a study volunteer receives, the study staff will monitor their health and safety throughout the clinical trial. After the treatment period is done, the follow-up period begins. During this time, the study volunteers no longer receive the therapy, but their health is still closely monitored. This helps researchers learn about any long-term benefits or possible medical problems. How can you make clinical trials work for you and your family? The success of clinical trials depends on including a diverse group of people representative of those who may receive the new therapy if it is approved for use. Right now, 
many groups of people are underrepresented in clinical trials. So how can you get involved? One way is to ask your doctor or patient advocacy group about how you can help design clinical trials or monitor the groups that design these studies. Another way is to consider participation as a study volunteer. Even if you aren't looking for a new treatment, you can join a research study as a healthy volunteer. You can find out if trials are available at a local hospital or community health center. You can also search online for participation opportunities. Many patient advocacy groups and the United States federal government maintain up-to-date lists of clinical trials that are looking for volunteers. During the informed consent process, you can and should ask the study team any questions that you may have about the study visit schedule, required procedures, and any other aspect of participation that's important to you. For example, you can ask the study team about how the results of the trial will be shared and how you can see the impact that you made through your participation. How have people described their experience participating in a clinical trial? Great question. In a recent global survey among people who have recently participated in a clinical trial, the majority of folks reported positive experiences and minimal disruption to their daily routine. Most of them also indicated that they would be willing to participate in another clinical trial in the future. But before you participate in a trial, make sure you talk to the study team about what to expect so that you can know whether participation is right for you. What are some of the ways that clinical trials are becoming more accessible to participants? Researchers are now using a lot of technology to make clinical trial participation easier. This includes text message reminders, smartphone apps, other kinds of mobility support, including free transportation services to and from the clinic. They're also making tools to help reduce burdens of participation for study volunteers. So talk to the study team about what they're doing to make it easier or make it possible for you to get involved. ¿Cómo podré encontrar un estudio que funcione para mí? This is the big question. There are all kinds of clinical trials and many don't even require taking a medicine. Still, you should have a good conversation with your care provider first. Patient advocacy organizations can help you find a good match, but there are also several websites devoted to connecting study volunteers to clinical trials. So these include government-maintained databases such as clinicaltrials.gov in the United States or clinicaltrialsregister.eu in Europe. Uh, there are websites that are run by nonprofits such as searchclinicaltrials.org uh, and researchmatch.org. There are patient advocacy group sites and websites, of course, run by pharmaceutical companies and medical centers that all list active trials. So get out there and check some of those out. There's definitely one that fits you.